To be a good detective, you need to be a good listener, you need to be empathetic, and you need to be a good puzzle solver. Somebody who is uh, determined to get that last piece of the puzzle to put it all together. The skills and abilities that you need is to be inquisitive and not to accept things on just first merit, to explore the information that we're presented with to ensure that it is correct. You need to want to find what the truth is You've got to be hungry for it. You've got to have a sense of public duty and be confident in your own abilities. And if you come up against something where you're not confident, you've got to be able to highlight that and ask for help and it will be there. Being able to work on your own, but also being able to work as part of a team. You need people who are reliable, that you can depend on, that can pull together and help each other out throughout the investigation. Can please where's your emergency? When I attend the scene of a serious crime, I'm always thinking about securing the evidence as early as possible, what resources I'm going to have, where the victim is, where the witnesses are, and you do have to think on your feet, you do have to use your initiative and draw on your experience, and that's what's the challenge for me is making sure that we do a good job with the resources that we've got and being in charge, being responsible for that investigation at that stage. We're here today for you to be able to tell me what's happened. When you're interviewing a vulnerable witness, you need to consider a video interview, which is a lot of planning involved, where you will need to ensure that you're the right individual to work with that victim or witness. It's about creating the right environment for victims and witnesses to be able to give their best evidence. I think it's really important that as an investigator you learn and develop upon your communication skills. You understand that we deal with a number of different individuals who are going to be faced with some really tragic and distressing information that one, we have to reveal to them and two, that we also need to help them manage that information and, and help them through that process. Often as a detective you're going to find yourself having to deal with people and families who are having the worst day of their lives. And it's important during those times that you have empathy and understanding with those people to help them. But it's equally important to remain professional so that they are reassured that everything that can be done is being done. When you find that vital piece of evidence in your case, it's brilliant. It's like finding the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle. You can put it all together, you can present it, and you can present that full case. It's a great feeling, it's a good buzz, and that's why I do the job. It, it can be a throwaway comment by a witness or something that's caught on CCTV that you didn't initially see. Let's go. Stay where you are! Bathroom clear, kitchen's clear, lounge clear. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. When I'm interviewing a suspect about a particular incident or offence, that that's a conversation between two people, but it has to have a purpose and that is to prove or disprove this person's involvement. It's important to really drill down into the account that the person's giving you so that you're able to understand the information, you're able to explore that information further so that you can keep an open mind about their involvement. Being a case officer at Crown Court is a feeling like no other. You are responsible for the police case. I've had cases where I've been at court for 10 weeks and you may have had to manage multiple victims and have to manage their expectations. It was quite emotional when we got the result in court. It was a good result and uh, the victim was so thankful, her family was so thankful and it makes you realise that that's why you do the job. We get those successes because we've done it the right way and we've ensured that we've applied the law lawfully, ethically and morally. When we got the verdicts back that he was found guilty, it was an amazing experience and it was wonderful to be able to finally kind of put some closure for those victims and to, to update them that he had been found guilty. And then he was sentenced to 28 years. Not only did it give the victims some closure and make them feel that they had been listened to and they had been heard, it also meant that we were protecting 
the public um, and vulnerable children, vulnerable adults from, from any further offending.